Folks, you ready? We're good. Good to have you here with us on the fifth Sunday in Lent here at Christ Lutheran. If you're in the car, come on inside and join us. We will be, unless it snows, unless it snows next Sunday, we're going to be outside, okay? So if you wake up at 8 and there's two feet of snow, we're going to be inside, right? We're good. We're good. Exciting to get back outside. We do better outside because we have more room to run around, so it's good. Right? Right? At least my, my dogs. Uh, they're not. Yeah, well. All right. A few <laughs> announcements to share with you today. Downstairs at 10, together at 10 in the community room. And this is a, a multi-generational Sunday school we do every first and third Sundays of the month. This Wednesday, if you all are looking for a new hobby that has good outcomes, I've got one for you. Knitting or crocheting prayer shawls Wednesday afternoons from 3.30 on in the parlor with Rita. Um, so we have one more soup and bread dinner th this Wednesday, and if you'd like to uh, share some soup, we could use your, your culinary expertise. We gather in the fellowship hall at 6 p.m. for soup and bread, and then gather here in the sanctuary at 7 for the beautiful Holden Evening Prayer Service. We continue our devotional uh, studies in Lent with a cup of, of our life by Sister Joyce Rupp, and that meets Wednesdays after <clears throat> Holden Evening Prayer and Thursdays in the parlor at 10 a.m. We have um, the opportunity, if you'll notice, on your Holy Week services on the second inside page. We begin Holy Week on Palm Sunday, next Sunday, and weather permitting, we'll be gathering outside at the beginning of the service, but you'll already be outside, so don't worry. And then we, we often process uh, first service. This is the luxury of first service. We process in the parking lot, whereas at the 11 o'clock, we walk around the whole church. So, you know, you guys make your choice based on your your ability and your desire to walk, but we will march together in the procession of palms. Holy Week with Monday, Thursday, March 28th at 7 p.m., service of Holy Com uh, Communion. Good Friday, uh, March 29th at 3 p.m., we meet outside here with our fellow Christians from the community, and we go on the, cr the way of the cross, a walk, crosswalk, we walk down, all the way down to uh, Grandin Village, stopping 14 times to remember the 14 stations of the cross with, with uh, worship and praise and, and pedestrian traffic. So we invite you to be part of that at 3. Then at uh, 7 p.m., uh, the, the Tenebrae service here in the... In the uh, Fellowship Hall. I mean, I'm sorry, in, in the sanctuary. Virgil of, Vigil of Easter. Easter. <laughs> my, my, Virgil. The whole punch took down the middle of it and I wrote it. It's Vigil of Easter. <laughs> Could be Virgil too if he comes. Sure. That is on Easter Saturday. It begins with a bonfire outside at 9 o'clock in the evening. And then we gather inside for various portions of the worship. It's a very moving service with readings uh, and uh, commemoration throughout that service. Easter Sunday we gather. Uh, there is a community um, sunrise service down at Sherwood Park up on the hill at Sherwood. And that's at 6.30, followed by a, uh, our service at 9 o'clock in the, in the uh, parking lot and then the 11 o'clock service here in the sanctuary. At 10, we gather for an Easter brunch in the fellowship hall. We ask you to bring a brunch dish or brunch item to share, and that will be in the fellowship hall. It's good fellowship, good food. And then in our prayers today, we have on our prayer list those who have already been listed. We add the, the father of Sheila, who um, had been hospitalized off and on for the last week and a half. Uh, also pray for uh, Andy, Andy Huntley, who is um, on hospice and in intensive care. Are there others that we can add? P please write those on your 
your bulletin, and we will add those to the prayers in the coming weeks. Let us prepare for worship as we go through the confession and forgiveness as it's found on page one. Oh, yes. She's showing me a bag. Where is she? Well, come up forward. Where's your bag? Mo modeling our newest uh, accessory <laughs> is Shelly Campbell. Shelly, you want to come up here and tell the people about it? No, you're going to do it there nice and loud, your outdoor voice. Thank you. Not only are they good for, for groceries, they're just good for all around walking outside. So, very thank you, Shelley, for modeling that. We appreciate it. Let us continue with the confession and forgiveness found on page one of our bulletin online at ChristLutheranRoanoke.org. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Christ. Amen. Amen. Held in, Jesus, in Christ's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are, we are caught, caught in the snares, snares of sin and cannot, cannot break, break free. free. We hoard, hoard resources, resources while our neighbors, neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak, we speak in, in ways, ways that silence others. We are, we are silent, silent when, when we should speak up. up. We, we keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all of these things and for our sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good night. 
mountain, my rescue, raise me up from death to life. The Spirit is in me, revealing your glory. For what joy has I given my life? Grace for our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also, also with, with you. you. O God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. It's time for children's message. Oh, I got my... Oh. <laughs> you like you can me? do it if you want. You say you like me or you might be? <laughs> Both. Hello. How are you? There is so much green today. I like it. Oh, goodness. Even Michael David wore his green today. So, we uh, just heard Mrs. Campbell read from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a... I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> that Jeremiah was a prophet. Do you remember what a prophet is? What's a prophet? A person who follows God. A person who follows God and a person who speaks, speaks for God, right? So Jeremiah... His story is in the Old Testament and the words that he preached... Oh my goodness, what do you think of him? Does he look like somebody who's speaking the words of God? He looks a little scared, doesn't he? Let's find out his story. When Jeremiah was just a boy, God told him that he was going to be a prophet. He was going to tell all sorts of people about God. Jeremiah couldn't believe it. God and Jeremiah had a big talk. You ever had a big talk with God? Oh, I have. Whew. 
Jeremiah, I knew you were, I knew who you were before you were even growing inside your mom, God said. You were born to be a prophet. Jeremiah was nervous. But God, I'm just a kid. I don't know what to say to grown-ups, he said. We'll do it together, God said. Where you go, I will go with you. When you talk, I'll give you the words. God touched Jeremiah's lips. Now your mouth is full of my words, God announced. Go tell everybody about my love. God and Jeremiah made a good team. Jeremiah took God's love to many people in many places. And we just heard in that reading today, Jeremiah sharing the good news that God is making a new promise to the people to be with us always in our hearts so that we can share God's love. And I bet that there are lots of ways that you do that just by being you, right? You let people know about God's love just by being you, but also by caring and sharing and talking and speaking God's words saying, God loves you. God loves you. Let's pray. God, we thank you for Jeremiah and for all your prophets, and we thank you for giving us the words and the hearts to share your love. Amen. Thanks for coming up. The Holy Gospel according to John the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come. For the Son of Man to be glorified, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father, Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is not for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. Lutheran Seminary professor Caroline Lewis states, To serve Jesus is to follow Jesus. And to follow Jesus is to do the works that he did, to feed and tend his sheep, to testify on his behalf. 
Moravian pastor Audrey West of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania once wrote, making it possible for his followers to, uh, to abide together with him seems to be a core purpose of Jesus' ministry. Where is Jesus? He is with the Father and he dwells among us. He is leading his followers to eternal life as he moves toward the hour of his death. Before much longer, he will be lifted up on the cross where he will lay down his life for his friends. Even as a grain of wheat falls to the earth in order to fulfill its true purpose, Jesus is lifted up from the earth in order to fulfill his, so that he may draw all people to himself. It is there at the cross that we will see his glory. And Jesus says, where I am, there my servant shall be also. You know, closeness with God has benefits. Jeremiah in the 31st chapter says, I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach each other or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all Know me from the least of these to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. They will know me. The Hebrew for this knowledge is not just an intellectual understanding, but also a deep spiritual connection that binds us close to God. That God, when he seeks us out, is not only looking for followers and companionship, but an intimate relationship that binds us to the very heart of God. As a parent to a child, God seeks to be in relationship with us to lift us up when we fall, to, to show us the way when we stumble, to give us peace and rest at the last. Wherever you go, there you are. It almost sounds like a Yogi Bearism, doesn't it? A humorous version it is, actually, of, quote, Wherever you go, you take yourself with you, and you will always find yourself. And just like a bearism, things that are profoundly simple but make incredible sense. Where I am, there will my servant be also. You know, it's kind of funny that we talk about Yogi Berra, and he had a lot of these sayings, you know, the, it ain't over till it's over, right? Remember those fr phrases that go back to the, the ominous catcher for the Yankees who went on to be a great manager as well? And sometimes people made fun of his simplicity, but when they thought about what he said or what was attributed to him, it makes sense. Wherever you go, <laughs> there you are. Of course. And yet we seem to forget when Jesus says, wherever you go, wherever you go, I am with you. And when we go in the name of Christ, when we love and serve and care in the example or imitation of Christ, not only do we represent or are we ambassadors to Christ, but Christ is with us in that which we do. That also means that throughout our lives, no matter where we are, God, Christ, is with us. Always. Under us. 
above us, among us, within us. Wherever you go, Christ is with you. As followers of, and disciples of Christ, we know from the Psalm 16, you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The benefit of being close to God does not give you carte blanche to, to do anything you want, but to know that you are always supported. You are always loved, even in the midst of the most difficult situations you might find yourself in. No matter, no matter how deep your despair, Christ is with you. Corrie Ten Boom, a beautiful, beautiful woman from Holland whose family harbored Jews trying to resist Nazi persecution. Her family harbored people in the hiding place built into the wall behind Corrie's bedroom. And at one point during Nazi occupation, a neighbor turned them in for a simple sack of flour. That's how desperate people were. And Corey and her entire family were rounded up. Within months, her father had died, and then a little bit later, the beginning of December of 1944, Corey's sister, Bessie, who was by her side in Ravensbrück in the concentration camp, died as well. On Christmas Eve of that year, due to a clerical error, Corey was released from captivity. In her book, The Hiding Place, she writes about what it was like growing up in serving God, knowing that whatever they were doing to stand up for the rights of all people, to be treated with love and dignity and safety, though it put their family at risk, Corey felt it was her calling and her family's calling to serve God in a real and tangible way that even though it resulted in everyone but her death, it was God's presence always undergirding. At one point, Bessie and Corey were surrounded by grief surrounded by death, surrounded by horrible conditions. And they came up with an understanding of God's presence in their life. The quote, there is no pit so deep, God's love is not deeper still. But also, there's no joy more complete than the joy of the Lord in your heart. Through all extremes of our living, through the heights and the depths, through the joys and the sorrows, Christ is with you. Because where, where I am, Jesus says, there will my servant be also. Being close to God assures us, empowers us in helping others. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. It's a holy relationship of depth and grace and peace and love. Being close to God. Being close to God. All it takes is for us to take each step with the knowledge and the assurance that God is with us through it all. So let's sing the refrain of that old song. You know it. 
Just a closer walk with Thee, granted, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Let it be. Where I am, there my servant will be also. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement conflict or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. 
Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. We pray today especially for Dolores, Herman, Bob, Cole, Haley, Don, Andy, Doris, Linda, Betsy, Logan, Jerry, all those we name on our prayer list and all those we lift up before you in our hearts now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us. Especially today, we give you thanks for Patrick, missionary to Ireland. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with those around you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast Wash away our sin, that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bread for the journey of feast for hungry hearts. Come. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God.